guys, what's going on? Today we're fishing for something completely different. We're fishing for flounder at the beautiful Sebastian Inland. I've never fished for these guys before, so it was a different experience for me. We're fishing on the rocks, and there's a lot of people out there doing it. And they're using three different kinds of bait. They're using either mullet, mud minnows, or shrimp, which we use shrimp. I had a lot of fun catching these guys, so enjoy the fishing, then I will meet you back at the fillet table. Should I go measure it? Go measure it? On a shrimpy? Shrimp. Good job, babe. It's a keeper. Dark spots on them. Come back. Southern or gulf. Three dots. So that one, two, three. So it's a gulf flounder. They don't get as big. No wonder he's so small. Look at him just sitting under the rocks. This is why you get stuck. Go, little one. There he goes. Well, Vic, that's number two for me on shrimp. And zero. Oh, I got one. On shrimp? Oh, no, zero on shrimp for me. I told her that it couldn't be done, and she got it done. Everyone's over here hating, saying you can't catch one shrimp. <laughs> Maybe it's that she's got skill, Chris. You ever think of that? I'm not gonna say she doesn't. Ricky on the board with number four. I'm just here for entertainment. Oh my gosh, <laughs> oh, it's dead. You don't even have a chance to measure it. Goodbye, little one. Grab them with my hand. Yeah, noodle. Noodle flounder. Yeah, that's a noodle. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> Jesse, I've caught four. So we are done flounder fishing. But I just want to say one thing before we go out on the jetty and hopefully catch redfish and snook because it's blowing like 25 and we have a cold front. So hopefully the redfish are out there. Yeah, they should be fired up. You see Victor and I wearing these all the time in our videos. We wear them on our face to protect us from the sun and also to protect us from the cold because 
Windburn on your face, absolutely sucks. And you're probably not wearing a scarf in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> and I like to wear it on my neck, keeps my neck nice and warm. It's kind of like, it basically kind of is like a scarf. And or the biggest wear... thing is just to keep the wind out of your face too. Yeah, but anyways, so these are from Southern Fin, which they're doing right now is you can get a free buff as long as you pay for shipping. And that link will be down in the description. They're awesome, we absolutely love them and they are great Christmas stocking stuffers. <laughs> if you guys are interested in that, again, they will be linked down in the description. And I will see you out on the jetty. These freaking blue fish. Oh, they got me. other side of the jetty and we were catching bluefish victor caught one or two snook one snook one, one keeper snook, snook one keeper snook so you guys he's gonna have a snook catching hook yes i did not have any luck with the snook people were catching them today was a really tough day i mean the bluefish were nuts they were eating everyone's bait oh, yeah. and the amount of people that were fishing it was just like that fish had to find a needle in a haystack you know yeah. to find your bait I just had no snuck luck today. So hopefully, if we do stay again tonight, I do get a snuck because I am due for one. Yes, you are. <laughs> but I will meet you guys back at the play table to play with those flatters. So we 
are back home at the filet table and the last thing you saw of me was complaining about how I didn't really catch anything. But update, I did catch a snook. I ended up catching a 37 inch snook just at sunset. So I didn't get it on film, but here's a photo of it. I was super stoked to catch that snook. It ended my day perfectly. Okay, so here's the two keeper flounders that I caught, which I did end up catching five, but only two were keeper, which to be keeper, they have to be 12 inches. Now these are called golf flounders, and you can tell the difference between a golf flounder and a southern flounder, because these guys have three dots and like a triangle formation on their side. And these guys are pretty awesome. Brown on one side, and then white on the other super cool fish they blend in really well with the bottom and they can actually eat really big baits so they might be small fish but they got a big mouth that they just ambush prey and they also got a big stomach in there i've never flayed a flounder before i'm guessing they're not going to be the easiest thing my friend katie gave me a little advice though on flaying it start from the white side i'm going to start by making a cut by the head the head meat kind of goes all the way up to here and then their stomach is right here you can feel it it's nice and soft so I'm gonna cut around like this to connect my cuts. And you can see the backbone here. I'm gonna make a cut down the backbone to separate it, which you're gonna end up getting four fillets off this flounder. I'm going to slowly take my knife and separate the meat from the bones. These guys are super hard to grip, so definitely just gonna take my time. Wow, really good. actually going to leave the tail connected for when I skin it. So now with my tail still connected, I'm going to skin it. Awesome. There we go. There is our first fla flounder filet. So how was it? You made it look real easy, I'll tell you that. It, it wasn't that bad. I thought it was gonna be probably the hardest fish I've filleted, but I just took my time and look, I didn't miss any meat. I'd say that was pretty good for my first flounder filleting. So shout out to you, Katie, for the flounder filleting advice. I guess just the same thing. Get this side started. I'm also using a very flexible knife. I don't know if that's helping me. There we go. Not too shabby. Same thing, because that worked well. Gonna leave the tail connected. There is our second part of the filet. What do you think, Vic? I think that you could write a book on flounder filet. I'll tell you what, <laughs> that is probably the best flounder filet I've seen in person. And you made me look like a chump from my flounder filet video. Nice and easy. Good. Okay. Now supposedly this side has more meat and is easier than the other side, but we'll see about that. Starting with my head cut again, going around the stomach area, which you can distinguish because it's nice and soft. Make my cut down the backbone again. Just gonna do the same thing like the other side, just slowly separating the meat from the bones. Oh yeah, there's definitely a better chunk of meat on this side. It's thicker. Okay, gonna leave the tail section on again. Yeah, there's definitely a thicker piece on the 
brown side compared to the white side. You definitely want to take your time with these things because their bones are very thin and it'd be really easy to cut through to the other side. Okay, so look at how white that meat is. Look, you can almost read a newspaper through it. <laughs> I'd say not to uh, toot my own horn, but I think that was pretty good. But as long as you take your time, even if it's something new, like a flounder that probably seems really intimidating and hard, take your time and I promise you, you can do it too. <laughs> I can see why people like eating these because the meat is very white and there was no blood. No bloodline, no blood even when I was like cutting it. I'm gonna flay the other one up now and then I will meet you guys back in the kitchen. Welcome back to the kitchen. So tonight I'm making flounder franchise and since I don't have a lot of fish, I'm also throwing some shrimp into the sauce and then on the side, I'm serving some spaghetti squash. So let's get to cooking. We are serving our fish with spaghetti squash and all I'm going to do is cut these guys in half. Like, I'm gonna need your assistance. Whose kitchen cook is this? It's just really hard. Thank you. This is my assistant. Slash spaghetti squasher. Spaghetti squasher. Thank you, assistant. No problem. So now we're just gonna get out the seeds out of here. Now that we got our squashes cleaned out, I'm going to put some olive oil into them. And now we have salt. Fresh ground pepper. And then to cook them, you're gonna flip them over like this. All right, and now they're ready for the oven. I have my oven set on 400 degrees. Put those in and set my timer for 40 minutes. So definitely get these started first. Oh, let's season our fish. We got some salt and pepper. We're just gonna do a little salt, pepper, flip them over. Salt and pepper the other side. Now we got some flour. I want a nice layer of flour. So to cook my fish, I have a hot frying pan here. I got some butter. And I'm also doing some olive oil. So I have some egg here that's scrambled up and I'm going to put my fillets into here and then put them right into the pan. That egg and the flour is going to make for a super nice brown crispy outside. Definitely finished inside. We just let these sit 
Now that my wine is reduced by half, I'm gonna turn the heat down. I'm going to add the juice of one lemon. This is a really juicy lemon. Okay, well that lemon was very juicy, so I'm actually only gonna do half of it. And make sure you get any seeds out that might have gone in there. Don't want any seeds. Now we're gonna add the other half of the butter that we didn't use earlier. Save some of that flour from when I breaded my fish, and I'm going to add it to this water, and then add it into my sauce to thicken my sauce a little bit. Now I have some lemon slices here that I'm going to add into my sauce. Some parsley. Here is my fresh caught shrimp, also known as just picked up from Publix, <laughs> and they are already peeled and deveined because I went, I was being very lazy, and I've just had these thrown out. So I have a nice simmer going on in my sauce here, and now I'm going to add the shrimp. So now I have some capers. So now I'm going to take my fork to the squash and just take it apart, turn it into a nice spaghetti. Once it's nice and cooked, it's really soft inside. Nice and tender. Just kind of fluffing it up and then you can serve it in the skin like a little bowl. If you guys have never tried spaghetti squash, I definitely recommend trying it. It's unlike anything and honestly it does taste like spaghetti. And it's a much healthier option. Okay, so my shrimp are nice and white and opaque with the little pink tails. They are definitely cooked through. Even though these were cooked so long ago, they're still nice and hot because I used that hot pan from the oven. Let's see what Brooke made for us today. We got flounder, Frances, right? Yep. Flounder, Frances. Mmm. That's delicious. And since the fish you caught were a little on the small side, we didn't get as much to eat as normal. She added shrimp. Mmm. Wow, delicious also. And we don't have this very often. Spaghetti uh, squash. spaghetti squash. Nice lunch, Brooke. Thanks. Is it good? How's your shrimp, Fisher? Really good. I'm already done with it. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yep. That was fast. What about the spaghetti squash? Um, never had it, but it's it's really good. I'm surprised we don't cook it more often. So this is my first time having spaghetti squash. I've heard about it, but Brooke was adventurous and made it for us today. And I think you guys can tell I liked it. I scraped every little bit out of there. It was wow. delicious. Really delicious and simple. How'd you like it, Mom? I really enjoyed this. I, too, cleaned my squash out. The shrimps were really good. The fish was awesome. It may have been as good as I ever had it. The franchise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really awesome. Franchise is one of my mom's number one favorite fish dish. So when Brick and I went to Sebastian, she whooped me on the flounder fishing, and I really wish I brought home some keepers because I think flounder are probably my top five favorite fish. Really good, uh, flaky yet firm, just perfect. Just the fact that they're so flat, just perfect little fillets on your dinner plate. Very good fish. Welcome back to the kitchen. So tonight I'm doing <laughs> so tonight I'm making flounder 
strange case. Only six seconds. 